Good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Mittman. Welcome to the show that takes you inside the minds of today's hottest sports stars and a lot more. The doctors are in the house. We're going to answer the question, what the heck were they thinking? Let's go over and meet our doctors. Dr. Jared Spencer, a clinical and sports psychologist in private practice, and Dr. Jim Brennan, a mental skills and performance consultant for Villanova Athletics, and the champ himself, Larry Holmes. And right now, it's time for Knockout Topics. <laughs> Well, UNLV sneaked up on the nation. They beat uh, Georgia Tech, then upset number two seeded Wisconsin 74 to 68. Doc, why is it that we all love the underdogs? We all love upsets. We, we do love the underdogs, and I think that's what puts drama into sports is that we don't know who's going to win. We know which team is better, but that doesn't mean they're going to be the better team on that night. So that, that's what puts the drama, the uncertainty. And the other thing is sometimes we like to see the bully get beat and uh, if you're champ for seven and a half years maybe uh people are saying oh, how, do, how do we how do we find oh, somebody man. that can finally knock off knock off the the uh, the dominant there, there's player. a quick jab oh, there's yeah, a quick jab you gonna take that champ yeah, 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 well, yeah because come on but he's right though you know everybody <laughs> well, wants seven and a half year thing i i got yeah, that yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> everybody want to knock off the champ and you know you can't blame them because they give them more notoriety if they knock out off the champ but you know in my when I was fighting and I was heavyweight champion of the world, they, I liked for them to try to knock me off because they gave me more confidence in myself knowing that they were not able to do it. But that's the way it is. That's, that's what makes sports interesting, I think. Uh, people are always trying to knock off the best guy and your brother, your sister will root for the other guy to get you knocked out. And you know? sometimes I don't even think it's necessarily about wanting to see the guy knocked off the, the top as much as we want to see the guy from the bottom come up to the top it's because we all identify with the underdog you know there's a lot of room at the bottom of the mountain where we're all hanging out but there's not too much room at the top and so we want to see that guy at the top get knocked off when the guy when the team is winning and winning and winning people think man they ain't human that's when they want to see him get knocked off to let them know everybody is human they can lose just as well as they can win yeah we love that rags to riches story you know somebody who uh we like as you sure. said we can identify more with the, with, the, with the one with the less talent sometimes, and when we see them sometimes get to the top of the mountain. When you were the champ and you were seemingly uh, unbeatable, a lot of times, uh, you know, people would root for, for the underdog. You know, hey, if he just landed that one big punch against uh, Larry Holmes, like, like Ronaldo Snipes did, and, and uh, uh, you know, everybody's like, oh, could it be, could it be? But, but they still lost, you know what I mean? Well, because, they still lost. Because, but... you know, what happened, that, that gave me more determination. When people rooted against me and was betting against me, and I knew they were doing, especially when my friends were betting against me, Boy, I made me even more determined. You know, I probably would not have been heavyweight champion of the world, but I had so many people rooting and betting against me that I would not be the champ. Boy, that motivated me, and I became the heavyweight champ. So I say, I told you I would be the heavyweight champion of the world, and I had the opportunity to say that for seven and a half years. Let's talk to our motivational specialist. This does give you, give the the champion more uh, motivation, doesn't that? If the champion uh, believes that the that the, uh, the opponent really is coming after them to take something away. It, it's much more motivating to take something back from somebody who really wants it. But, but we all know, and, and this is where we're going to stroke the champ's ego a little bit, it's tough to stay on top of the mountain. Uh -huh. And it you know, takes it, a it, lot it, psychologically it, to no, be able to stay up there. It ain't tough if you're good. <laughs> well, I guess what I'm saying is, you were good. <laughs> you were good. <laughs> time to admit that. I admit it. I admit it. There it is. What, what was the hardest thing? While we, while we got you, we're going to put you on the spot. Uh, what was the hardest thing, winning the title, getting there to win the title, or keeping it after you became the heavyweight champion of the world? Well, you know, I had to prove it every day because a lot of people said I was very lucky to win the heavyweight championship. <clears throat> they, Wait they, a minute, hold on, I'm going to stop you. Yeah. If you saw that fight with Ken Norton, I, I would say it was anything but luck. Yeah, I tell you, <laughs> you know, and that's what made me, that motivated me even more because they say I would not hold the title, I would get beat right after that, and I held it for seven and a half years, as long as they kept telling me. But, you know, I let myself down at the end, and I didn't fight or train as hard as I, I did at the end because, you know, I was, like, tired of being the heavyweight champion of the world. I got tired of people saying that, you can't beat him, why, you know. So I just got tired of being the, the champ, so I, I let myself go. What he's saying, Doc, isn't it hard to keep that peak? 
Well, you, you, you got to stay hungry. And, and uh, Larry has said that before, that, that hunger for something, and often it's something that you haven't reached yet. And when you, when you, when you win over and over again, it, it's, it, it makes sense that you're not quite as hungry. Absolutely. After a while, you want to see what it's like back in the valley again. The view from the top is not so great after a long time. People love upsets. They really do, but I don't. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Pete Rose making uh, uh, more outrageous uh, statements, uh, adding uh, salt to the wound. What the heck was he thinking, Doc? And is he further away from getting into the Hall of Fame? Well, what we're talking about here is Pete Rose is now uh, saying that he actually bet on his baseball team to win every night. Now, come on, Pete. You told us for 15 years you didn't <laughs> bet. Then you told us you only bet once in a while. And now you're telling us that you bet every single night, but only that your team would win? I don't know. I think Pinocchio's nose has grown a little bit here. It seems to me like, you know, I don't know Pete Rose, but when I hear this type of language, it sounds to me like a little bit of a pathological liar. All right, well, I was just going to say, now, now you, you deal with this uh, as your profession. When somebody keeps changing stories like that, what signal does that send to you? Well, it's, it's, it's the nature of addiction. And what we're talking about here is some type of gambling ad addiction, obviously, and denial is a big part of that. And, and so they, they lie about lying about lying, and, and addictions have the highest rate of lying. So that's one thing that really stands out regarding this situation. You know, Pete Rose, want, <clears throat> excuse me, Pete Rose want attention. Pete Rose don't know what he want to do anymore. He wants to be in the, the, the Hall of Fame. He wants to be there so bad, he's saying everything that people want him to say and getting himself in trouble. They say, you bet on the game? Yes, I, I bet on the game. He think that'll happen. Did you, but you say you didn't bet? Yeah, I, that's right. I said I didn't do it. I didn't do it. He don't know where he's at. They got him confused. He done lost his way. He lost his I, mind I, because I, people I don't mess with him. I, and I, and I, I agree that he's a, he's a pathological liar because a pathological liar is somebody who will lie even when it doesn't serve their own best interest. And, and that's why Pete doesn't even know what he's trying to accomplish with these lies. At first he didn't gamble, then he didn't bet on baseball, then he didn't bet on his team. And he was somebody who went from, from the top, as far as admired American athletes, to in disgrace, and now he's just irrelevant. People just want him to go away. All right, but what, but what do you say to the people, and I have friends of mine saying, you know, forget all this stuff, forget the, uh, the addiction part, forget the gambling. Pete Rose was one of the best players. He deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. What do you say he, to he that? He was a great player. He was one of the, one of the greatest players. His, his game, his, his, uh, his career statistics put him in the Hall of Fame. But we, as fans, don't want to see that because we resent him now because of how much he's lied to and, us. And you know what? I think that's wrong. Because, you know, what the guy accomplished the things that he accomplished, they should put him in the Hall of Fame. I mean... In spite of the betting and whatever he's done, he still hit that ball. He still ran around that, those bases. He still helped those teams win. So they should put him in there just he's on that still factor. Hustled. He hustled. He's still <laughs> hustling. And, and, and you know what? But I he's mean, hustling us. That's yeah, the yeah, problem. Yeah, I mean, the voters today yeah. are going to say, listen, dude, you're lying to me again and again and again. Well, I can't give you the... The governor is hustling you're, us right you're, now. You're Look right. at the stuff they're having over there right. in Iraq. Uh, I knew that was going to happen. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying, champ. But what... What I think is that we're just tired of, being, tired of being hustled by Pete Rose. Well, not only Pete Rose, man. Pete Rose is a great player, and you cannot take that. He was a great player, and you can't take that away from him. I don't care how many <laughs> games he bet on and lost on or won on. I mean, the guy hustled, and you can't take that away from Charlie. Performance-wise, he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Can Performance we forget wise. the other stuff? Yeah, and that, I don't that, think so. That's why I have, I have to agree with the doctor here. you got to agree with <laughs> me. Just, as, a, as a fan, I, I, just, I just don't like the fact that he, that he is trying to hustle us, and so I would he's rather see trying him. To, he's, trying to, he's, he's just trying to get compensated for what he'd done. He, and, he, <laughs> and what he did was play great baseball. <laughs> he's going to cut you off. When we come back, we're going to roast uh, one of the champ's friends, Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, things are going to get a little rocky when we return <laughs> with what the heck were they thinking? Hi, I'm Smoking Joe Frazier, Sharp as a Razor. What the heck were they thinking?
the Flemington Department Store, located on Route 31 in Flemington. Come see why we're still growing after 40 years of great service. In our apparel department, you'll see one of the largest selections of men's, women's, and kids' clothing, workwear, and footwear. Update your home with the latest in flooring products. Flemington Department Store will customize any rug for any room. Need new furniture? Stop in and see our selection of name brand quality home furnishings. The Flemington Department Store, quality and value for over 40 years. Hi, this is Mike Mittman. Are you looking for a vehicle like brand new, only one, two, three years old? Do what I do. Come to Eberhard Motors. Isn't that right, Eric? That's right, Mike. We've been saying that for years. At Eberhard Motors, I handpick only the best, and there's nothing here I wouldn't put in my own driveway. And Eric, don't forget, all the cars are Advanced Star certified and ready to roll right off the lot. Of course I know, Mike. I'm the owner. Everhart Motors, been here doing it right for over 80 years. Nice suit. You too. What the heck were they thinking? C.E. Roth has men's fashions that goes the whole nine yards. Get a new look, an image update, get a suit that suits you. Over three generations of experience and a big selection of top name designers, C.E. Roth has fashion with flair. And you'll be a knockout. C.E. Raw, suit up. Two Sports does it again. Starting April 5th, Service Electric Cable TV will televise 22 Reading Phillies games live on Two Sports. America's favorite pastime can be seen exclusively in the Lehigh Valley on Two Sports. Catch the Phillies stars of tomorrow live on Service Electric Cable TV. Visit TV2Sports.com and click on the Reading Phillies logo for a schedule of games. The R Phils and Two Sports, it's a home run. Welcome back to the show. For those stations uh, joining us throughout the country, a special welcome to you. Right now, it's time for the fastest moving segment in TV today. It's time for Quick Jabs. Well, the uh, Los Angeles Lakers and Phil Jackson fined $50,000 apiece by the NBA after the coach said the league was uh, conducting a witch hunt. Uh, I don't know. Do you call that a witch hunt, Doc, uh, after Kobe's uh, slapping players and elbowing players? I is that really a witch hunt? Well, it's, it's not a witch hunt. I mean, he really was throwing the elbow and, and uh, knocking people in the head. And as far as Phil Jackson, I think that, that uh, Phil Jackson is sticking up for Kobe because Kobe's his meal ticket. And Phil Jackson found out a few years ago that he's not the big dog in L.A. When he went up against Kobe, he was out of town, and so was Shaq. So this time he's changing his tune. Kobe is a crybaby. Uh oh. <laughs> you know, if it, if it ain't his way, it ain't no way. Hey, don't sugarcoat it. I'm right? not gonna sugarcoat it. <laughs> and now the, he tells it like it and is. And, so the, it. and the owners are letting him call all the shots. And Phil Jackson is afraid that Kobe would say, "Out of here, you have no more job left." Because everybody know that Kobe hit the guy, hit the guy. I watched, I watched it on TV. It was like a fight. Every time Kobe would go for the ball, bang, that elbow went up there. He was knocking the heck yeah, out of him, guy. This was a flagrant so, attack by, by Kobe Bryant. This wasn't a, you know, a, an accident. It, I mean, for him to say this, he clearly, uh, like Larry says, has to be uh, protecting uh, the meal ticket here. Sure. You know, I, I respect Phil Jackson a whole lot. He's very open to psychology. The one thing that's standing out to me about this situation is it sounds a little bit to me like somebody's in an enabler role. We, I think we all see there is a problem with Kobe's play. Kobe doesn't see it. He's in denial. Sounds to me like Phil Jackson may be in the enabler role here, covering his own butt, as you were and, saying. And I, I, would, I would switch the term denial to arrogant. He's just so <laughs> arrogant. And if he had a coach who was really telling him what he needed to hear, it, it, Phil Jackson would be saying, stop it, just knock it off. You know what they always say, some money ain't worth having. If I got to sell my dignity and my pride down the drain, hey, <laughs> you know, let it go on down the drain. I'm going to tell you like it is. I mean, it might cost me a lot down the road, but I'm going to be honest with yeah, you. Who, I'm going to tell you exactly how it is. Who's running the team here, Jackson oh, or, or Kobe? Kobe's right. Phil, is Kobe's Phil's not doing it. We found yeah. out about that when, yeah. uh, when Shaq and, and Phil Jackson went up against him before. <laughs> All right, Cleveland uh, Cavalier center Scott Pollard looked into the camera during a, a recent game and said, kids do drugs? Uh, later apologizing, say it was just a joke, but uh, I don't find that very funny. And what the heck was he thinking? You don't kid about stuff like that. Yeah, you don't, you don't joke around about things like this. And, and the disturbing part to me is that what I'm hearing is minimization of his mistake. Look, we all make mistakes. 
the, the real truth is we got to own up to those mistakes and take self-responsibility. Instead, what I'm hearing him say is it was no big deal. He's minimizing it. When I hear that, that's disturbing. Yeah, it was a stupid thing to do. Who in the heck knows what he was thinking when he, when he, he, he mouthed those words into the camera? But then... I, I agree to trivialize it and say it was a bad joke. What part of that was supposed to be funny? I, I, I hate to say it, the kids do drugs. Sure. A lot of kids do drugs. And they are out there doing it right, right now. There's a whole lot of kids are doing drugs because everybody else gets it. Like the kids on the, on, on, on the news the other night, what they were out there teaching them how to smoke marijuana. They were drugs. They were only five, six years old. People were teaching them we kids how to do the drugs. It. We're not encouraging it, but he just was telling it like it is. And what people don't want to hear the truth. These kids, a lot of these kids are on drugs. They're using drugs. They're smoking the marijuana. They, they snorting cocaine. Yeah, but shouldn't he be saying kids is a bad thing to do, you know, uh, be a, be, follow uh, the lead. Well, I guess I can't say that anymore. Don't follow the lead of the athletes because they all are doing yeah, drugs, but, but, look, but, but don't doing. do drugs. But look what they were doing on there. They was uh, snorting uh, alcohol and turpentine and stuff like that. It was all on the news. So, you know, kids are trying to get high off whatever. And if, if somebody around in their family is doing drugs and they're doing all that turpentine and stuff like that, it, your kid's going to do the it, same it, thing. It's, it's crazy. And, there, and we're seeing a lot of people do drugs, and there's a lot of different reasons, the self-medication reasons. I think they're trying to fill some void inside. Uh, the, the blaze. Well, what kind of a leader is that? An athlete is supposed to be uh, somebody to look up to, to tell you, do drugs. That, about, that isn't funny. Yeah, it's, it's not funny. It ain't no void. They're just trying to be cool, hip. What's happening? That's why they <laughs> do drugs. You know what? I let them guys have it. Because, you know, one time I was trying to be cool and hip, and I smoked some marijuana, too. But you know what? That turned me around to be what I am today. So Did you inhale? <laughs> <laughs> you, you could be president one day. You, you, you know that. Of course, don't I inhale. Don't answer that. <laughs> well, things uh, certainly got a, a little rocky for Sylvester Sloan. I'm sorry, champ. We're picking on, on your good friend. Uh, he was found in Australia with 48 vials of the growth hormone HGH. Uh, he said it was all a misunderstanding. I don't understand. Uh, the vials are there or they aren't there. How do you misunderstand well, that? It's, it's a shame because uh, we all admire the Rocky Balboa character, and he's a fictional character, and it's a shame that Sylvester Stallone has sort of, sort of taken on this persona as a 60-year-old living cartoon character. Yeah, and say it ain't so, please, you know, tell me he didn't, he didn't do the drugs, but... Come on, wake up, please, not <laughs> Here's a good friend of yours, you've been with him many, many times, what, what's going on here, champ? A guy is 5 foot 10, is built like a hawk, you know what I mean, he got to be doing something, and sometimes when you get into that thing there in Hollywood, you don't know how to stop, you keep doing it, keep doing it, thinking he's going to get younger, he's thinking he's going to be better, he's going to do all this, he can't do it no more, so he keep needing that booster to make him think that he still can be the man that he would once were, and you I, can't. I met Stallone on several occasions, and he's not even 5'10". I think he's more like 5'8 and a half, you know, 5'9". Sure. And I saw him before some of the Rocky movies, and he looked this way. Mm -hmm. Then I saw him on the screen, and he looked like three times the size, and I'm thinking, wow. Is, is, is he working out, huh? Yeah, he's working out. Every, every chance he gets, he turns the bottle up, you know, and gets some more strength out of it. But, you know, that's the way these athletes do. They, they want to build. They want to be strong. They want people to recognize the bodies and stuff like that. But they don't realize that stuff is killing them all the time. But it worked for the movie role, right? Well, it worked for the movie role. He made a lot of money. I think the reality is what we're talking about is this guy perhaps uses drugs. If that's the case, we're talking about somebody that has poor judgment to begin with. Not surprising. He tried to carry it on the plane. Okay, he made a lot of money, but what's good, money or your life? Oh, you're right, absolutely. I'm actually going to agree with you for the Better. first time and say, you're right, <laughs> his health is more important. I, I, I think he's suffering from, uh, from narcissism. or he, I, I, I think you're right, Larry. He can't yeah. really turn it around at this point. What does that mean, narcissism? So, I love me. That means I love me. I love me. Well, I told you about them words. Then I talk, break it down. Yeah. Talk English. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I can solve the whole thing uh, coming up uh, to a theater near you soon. Uh, it's uh, Rocky Seven. Sylvester Stallone. Uh, Rocky Balboa versus Evandy, uh, Vander Holyfield. Maybe we can squeeze in Gary Matthews Jr. and Barry Bonds in there. I don't know what with cameo appearances. What a great movie that would be. But I'll tell you what, the doctors are going to answer uh, all your questions, your emails when we return with what the heck were they thinking? Hi, this is Mike Mittman. Are you looking for a vehicle like brand new, only one, two, three years old? Do what I do. Come to Everhart Motors. 
Isn't that right, Eric? That's right, Mike. We've been saying that for years. At Eberhardt Motors, I handpick only the best, and there's nothing here I wouldn't put in my own driveway. And Eric, don't forget, all the cars are Advanced Star certified and ready to roll right off the lot. Of course I know, Mike. I'm the owner. Eberhardt Motors, been here doing it right for over 80 years. I'm Larry Holmes, the former heavyweight boxing champion of the world. And I'm Mike Mittman, host of the show that takes you inside the minds of today's hottest sports stars and beyond. The doctors are in the house. Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Spencer. And I'm Dr. Jim Brennan. We're going to answer the question, What, what the heck were they thinking? Join us each and every Monday night at 8.30 and Sundays at 8 for What the Heck Were They Thinking? The Flemington Department Store, located on Route 31 in Flemington. Come see why we're still growing after 40 years of great service. In our apparel department, you'll see one of the largest selections of men's, women's, and kids' clothing, workwear, and footwear. Update your home with the latest in flooring products. Flemington Department Store will customize any rug for any room. Need new furniture? Stop in and see our selection of name brand quality home furnishings. The Flemington Department Store, quality and value for over 40 years. The Lehigh Valley Outlaws are wanted for conspiring to entertain. Beautiful Lady Outlaws dancer. Wanted for excessive scoring, wall-to-wall -wall bone crushing hits, and stealing fans' hearts. The Outlaws are wanted for non-stop action, contributing to the enjoyment of minors. Watch the Outlaws drop the hammer on opponents and excite the Valley. April 7th, the Outlaws take on the Revolution. Kick off 7 p.m. Tickets only 10 bucks by calling 610 Football or visiting 610Football.com. Indoor football, outlaw style. Welcome back to the show. We're going to take a look at uh, the emails that you've sent in. If you've got a question, you'd like to say hi to us, say hi to the champ, say hi to me. Email us, easy to do. AskTheDocs at Yahoo.com. That's all one word, AskTheDocs at Yahoo.com. Let's take a look at our email. Docs, in terms of team chemistry, are there times when teams get along too well? And that was sent in by Brian. Doc? I don't think so because I think you know when we're talking about the essence of sports, we're talking about teams, we're talking about the camaraderie, we're talking about the kinship, and so clearly if teams getting along so well, I don't think it's a problem. I'd go back to the old proverbs, "This too shall pass," so and say enjoy it. It may not last all that long, and particularly, uh, good team chemistry can make the victories a little bit sweeter, but it can also help soften some of the losses. So I say enjoy it. It'll probably pass sometime soon. Dr. Jared, I think you're a gifted psychologist, and I know you were a tough competitor, but you know what you sounded like with that answer? What? You sounded like a soccer mom <laughs> driving a little minivan around with the kids in the back. So I got well, the minivan in the back. What, what, you, what you're looking for in team chemistry, and chemistry itself, the energy comes from the reactions, from chemical reactions. And so when you get a team that gets along too well, then it's too easy. I think it's, they, they help each other uh, accept losses too easily rather than challenge each other. All right, but let, let me just stop you right there. Uh, not to mention any names, but we've been talking uh, on earlier shows about a football team, which shall remain nameless, uh, that had some problems in the locker room and didn't get along. D doesn't that hurt as well? There's a tipping point. There is a tipping point. But I think where you've got to have people that are challenging each other to get better, and you've got to have leaders who will emerge to, to tell their teammates, hey, you're not working hard enough, and they have to be willing to be a little unpopular. You know what, I think you're right, Doc, you know, because there ain't no team, all, everybody's not going to be happy on the team. It's always going to be a little jealousy here, jealousy here, a little jealousy there, but it's up to that coach to straighten them all out and keep them on the right line. Yeah, just like you're in a heavyweight championship fight, what would happen if, uh, you know, you, you're four cornermen in there and they all start fighting amongst each other and, and, and arguing with each other? Well, it, it, there was a lot of confusion in there, I tell you that, because that did happen to me a few times, but... Uh, I have to be the one to control it. And at that time, when you're in the middle of the fight, you can't control it. So uh, I think the coaches in, in the different sport. As they say, the buck stops here. Yeah, with the coaches. You gotta stop. All right, once again, if you've got a, a, you'd like to say hi, you've got a question for us, uh, you can email us, askthedocs at yahoo.com. Askthedocs at yahoo.com. And if we do not select your, uh, your uh, question to be on television, the docs will uh, send you a personal email and answer your question uh, by email. We'll send it back. Okay. <laughs> right now, <laughs> it's, it's time for... 
for our prestigious uh, uh, Peak Performance Award of the Week and the not very prestigious Bonehead Award of the Week. Hold on a second. If uh, you're a politician, institution, individual, athlete, whatever, doing something wrong, we're going to keep you honest. We're going to give you the bone. It's time for our Bonehead Award of the Week. And, well, I have a, a Bonehead Award of the Week. Um, in the third quarter, Madison Square Garden, which is known for its fighting, and, and, and that's certainly a, a, a good thing. Some great fights, as you know, champ, fought many times at Madison Square Garden. But this time, it was in a, uh, <laughs> a high school double-A uh, uh, division City League Championship basketball game in Madison Square Garden. A big brawl broke out went into the streets and uh, you know uh, it's one thing to have that high school rivalry but uh, this was going a little bit overboard don't yeah, you think that, that ugliness really takes away from the rivalries too i know we we joked about the eastern phillipsburg game we're phillipsburg supporters but after that game when i walked off the field i thought uh the, the better team won that day and all the kids played their hearts out and, and that's a good thing that's the best uh, you expect from sports but. absolutely yeah it brings out that sportsmanship brings out the best in each yes. other and there's that mutual admiration and respect when it's when it's done right well said yeah it's your leading is good but this was wow all right champ here you are we're passing the bone my bonehead go to NCAA and also with Pete Rose and Phil Jackson and Scott Portland and, and Sly Stallone. Did we miss anybody? No, I, no, because I'm gonna tell you, everybody I told on you this in trouble. You know they, you know, because they all want, you know, the the people, you know, want upset all the time. You know, Phil Jackson not standing up for uh, his, his team. Uh, Pete Rose don't know which way he's going, left or right. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just crazy. Kids doing drugs. And Stallone said he never did drugs and had a whole box in his pocket. Did so you know it when he was hanging out with him? Did you ever know, think he was taking these growth hormones? Well, you know, of course, I think everybody did, you know, because he wanted to be a big man, and he was just little, so don't even realize. He liked because, hanging around <laughs> with you, though. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the side was going to rub off on him. <laughs> so that's my bonehead. All like right. <laughs> of course he enjoyed hanging out with you. Yeah. My bonehead goes to uh, the Iditarod uh, mush, I guess they're called musher, who, uh, who, who beat two of his dogs with a stick after 1,100 miles when two dogs refused to, uh, to go any further. He beat all 10 dogs with, with the stick. One of them ended up dying, and uh, he was disqualified from that Diderot. Uh, that's, that's pretty cruel, and, and uh, he, he definitely deserves a bonehead. You, if Larry would have known about it, he would have put him on his list. Oh, I'm sure. You know, I, 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 I can't... Larry would beat him with a stick. I, I can't give jam. my bonehead a word out now because I was going to give it out to Dr. Jim for insulting all the soccer moms out there with that last comment, but after he made up for it by being sensitive to the dogs, I'm going to pass and not give you the bone. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> all right, it's time for our prestigious uh, uh, Peak Performance Award of the Week, and I would like to, uh, to give the award to former champion Evander Holyfield fought over the weekend uh, and uh, looked good with a, uh, a knockout over Vinny Madalone. Of course, Vinny Madalone, another one of the uh, uh, direct from the emergency room fighters. Uh, and, and, you know, Holyfield continuing his winning ways, but now we're getting serious. They're talking about a uh, possible fight either against uh, uh, top contender Samuel Peter or one of the Klitschko's. And uh, now I we get to the point where, where he can get hurt, right, champ? Well, you know what? He's in a dangerous game, and you know he's one of those guys that they say is on steroids and whatnot. And you know what? You know, sell some of the property that he got, so you don't have to keep fighting because he's <laughs> putting his life on the line, and you know it's easy for him to get hurt. All right, yeah, yeah 44. You know, look at all right. Quickly, we're running out of time. Mm -hmm. Your uh, peak performance. My award. peak performance award go to you guys here, starting my week off every Monday. You guys are great. I love you all, and I appreciate it. <laughs> you guys, you're gonna make me cry. Yeah. Go ahead. All right, Doc. Go ahead, go ahead. Last week we got you got the, the bonehead for putting up with us, but, yeah. uh, so that's that's good. Uh, I want to give my peak performance to to uh, a senior basketball player from Vanderbilt, Derek Byers. In October, when the SEC coaches got together and chose the preseason team, he wasn't on it. He ended up becoming Player of the Year. Scored 27 in an upset of Washington State. He's got uh, Vandy in the Sweet 16, and let's see how far Derek Byers can take them. And from the national level to the regional level, I want to recognize Emmaus High School swim teams, the men and the women. Both teams won the state title this past week, and that's an incredible feat. Sometimes in an area like Lehigh Valley where football and wrestling seem to be kings, other sports don't get the recognition they deserve. Congratulations to swim teams from Emmaus.
All right, we are out of time for the doctors. Dr. Jared Spencer, Dr. Jim Brennan for the champ himself, Larry Holmes. I'm Mike Mittman. We'll see you again next week when we'll ask, what, what the, the heck, heck were they, they thinking? thinking?